Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for joining me. My name is Janelle. Today I'm going to be reading and reacting to a book gifted to me by a dear friend, one of my best friends, called Half Blood by Maria Campbell. Maybe Mariah Campbell, I'm not certain to be honest. And apologies for the noises from the cats. <laughs> so Maria is a Métis author and playwright from Canada. So this is her memoir that was published originally in 1973. And this is a reprint from 2019, I believe. I, per myself, I have Indigenous heritage, um, Indigenous ancestry. I've known that as a child. And I've always, even though unfortunately having hardly any knowledge of my heritage and the culture, I've always felt very drawn to it. I remember as a child, my mom booked a field trip because um, she was, I was homeschooled and she was the field trip coordinator and booked, uh, I don't know why it was happening, but Indigenous peoples gathered together and uh, were educating about their culture whether that was us watching dances or listening to their music or whatever it may have been and i just loved it to me there's there's nothing there's nothing quite like that music like you just feel it through your soul and i always wanted to learn more and for whatever reason and I genuinely cannot work out the why. I wanted to know more, but for whatever reason, I never pursued learning more, which is ridiculous um, up until this year, realistically. Um, this year, I've mentioned in other videos, I've been wanting to read a lot more books from Canada, generically. Definitely, though, with a focus on Indigenous peoples. I understand it's far back. But I'm still, it's still a part of who we are, regardless of that, in my opinion. Early in the year, I read Five Little Indians by Michelle Good. Incredible, incredible, impactful book. I so highly recommend. Um, it's, it's fiction. It's five people after they leave the residential school and their lives afterwards and trying to figure out how to live after the horrors of that and even though it's fictional it's so plausible that there were children coming out of those schools living lives very mirrored to how that was so that book was very accessible it was i thought i'd have to take breaks and walk away from it from time to time i didn't i was able to just sit down and read it it was so accessible, but that didn't um, distract from any of the traumas that the children had experienced. So that is something I want to learn more about because I didn't know about the residential schools until a handful of years ago, which is shameful. I can't like it was so well hidden. It was so shoved under all the rugs like it was just it's ridiculous. So my best friend, um, ha she's Métis, she has a lot more knowledge about it than I do, and she's taken courses. Oh, hello. <laughs> Theodore has joined. So she, my mom came in October to pick my grandmother up, who'd been visiting, and she sent with my mom Half-Blood by Maria Campbell um, as an early Christmas present, which is so sweet of her, and left a very, very sweet note inside. So I started reading it. And promptly oh, discovered, good grief, get your bum up there, promptly discovered, like, chapter one, page one, that I am related through, I, I fi finally figured it out through digging, um, to Gabrielle Dumont, who the author mentions, who was involved with the Louis Riel rebellions, who was the first president, I believe, of ah, one of the temporary parliaments or something like that um so I recognized the surname so I went back into my tree dug for a while was finally able to trace far back enough and yes Gabrielle Dumont would be my seventh great grand uncle so quite far back but there and then she was talking about her great grandfather and how he married Gabrielle Dumont's niece 
And so I'm like, wait, her great grandmother was Gabrielle Dumont's niece. So I then worked out the tree, figured it out, and Maria Campbell and I are related, albeit very distantly. <laughs> We're like fourth cousins, five times removed, something like that. But that's still cool um, and very interesting. I also think that now this book is going, hello. That now there's there's no point in stopping because he won't. Um, I it's interesting how this book's now going to impact me because before I'm reading this story, this this memoir about my heritage and what um, what happened, what they went through. Now it's not only that; it's also my ancestors themselves um, and what was experienced and the different traumas and you know she's gonna write about the good the bad the ugly the in between all of it and there are trigger warnings it's not gonna be an easy book to read like there's um various substance abuses there's uh assault sexual assault um all like there's a variety of trigger warnings for the book um so I'm not you know it's not gonna be an easy read I am hoping to read it in one sitting today because I'm very eager about it. The problem is I keep stopping reading it so I can research stuff that she's mentioning. So it's very slow so far because I keep pausing because I find something fascinating and I go to look it up. So um, Theodore is so excited to read. So anyway, um, I need to stop rambling on, but that's kind of my pre-thoughts. I'm on page 16. I'm about to start chapter three. Um, so I'm going to read for a bit here and then I will let you know. Yeah. I will let you know, um, what my thoughts are as, as we go. All right. I don't know how I'm going to do this. All right, you comfy, kid? Let's get this open. All right, bookmark out. There. same day it's the evening now and I have finished reading Half Breed by Maria Campbell um and I, I just decided to record my final thoughts about it now um because but well I didn't want to wait till tomorrow I have rated it I kind of I have mixed feelings about rating memoirs because I don't think it's right to put like a numerical value to someone's life story. On the other side of that, on the other side of the coin, ratings probably help. Um, the sell, the sale, sorry, of the book, like that way. So I did rate the book. Um, and I mean, I'm not much of a memoir reader anyway. The only other one that immediately comes to mind is Matthew Perry's memoir. And I didn't put a rating behind that one, but I think I'll go back and do that now. Um, so let's get into what my thoughts were. I literally spent the day reading this book, um, listening to various um, options of music while I read. And it, yeah, it was, it was a lot, extremely well written, very well told, 
but the amount that Maria and her family and all of her people went through is so, so much to even attempt to process. Um, and I don't know that we ever will fully be able to, but need to try consistently as much as possible to understand, to learn, and to better the future. That I actually like reading the first like bit of the book because she sets up like her ancestry, which is where I realized her and I are distantly related, um, which was very cool. Then going through her story, like she's going through from her childhood and she had, she's had an extremely hard life and that is putting it mildly, like the utmost of mild, but for the like, for certain triggers, I, it actually wasn't until it was a little bit further in the book than I had anticipated. Um, but I think that made it, like, it's just how it fell into her life story. Um, I'm trying to articulate this as respectfully um, and correctly as possible. There are definitely trigger warnings for the book. Child abuse, sexual assault substance abuse, addictions, um, yeah, um, um, uh, thoughts, um, severe depression, and the, uh, triggering thoughts that can take, that can carry you on from there, and, uh, it's also, it's so hard to comment on someone's life. I think, I'm okay, I'm not sure if this book is required reading in schools. It wasn't when I was in school. That being said, it would have to be like high school and older because of the content. So maybe it is in some universities. Um, I hope so. I hope so because I am, the person who believes a way to avoid repeating the mistakes of our past is to become extremely educated about it, to have the knowledge to ensure the same paths aren't taken. Um, you, there was like, there was a few moments where I just had to stop and like take a deep breath because like her hopelessness and loneliness and grief and anger and it like it just was so it built up so much and I felt like I needed to like take a deep breath to like get through it you know like I don't think there's really a word to encompass all of those feelings in one go um so it is definitely like hard it isn't like I'm doing such a poor job of stringing sentences together. She wrote it extremely well, and I do want to read her other works. I am also so curious in her afterward, uh, after, yeah. she, in the new publication, she added an afterward. And she mentions, like, her joy at the expense of Indigenous, um, everything uh authors musicians artists all of that and she mentions that she has i think five like works from five family members um i'm sure she said it was family members um who are now published uh let me see here da -da -da -da. <laughs> including five members of my immediate and extended family. And so I'm so curious about that. Um, so I hope that through some digging, I can find out who those people are um, because I would love to read more and I wanna read the other things she has written. I know she has 
other things published. And she's a playwright as well. Um, but it's also interesting because she's born and raised in Saskatchewan, but through her life, she goes to BC, she goes to Alberta. Um, at a point, she lives in a city that's 15 minutes away from where I grew up, right? So that, that was crazy as well. And then so much happens in her life when she's so young. And I'm keeping in my mind, because like this book was originally published in 1973, um, so she was born in 1940, so she would have been 33 when that's published. But the amount that she went through in her life, you would think when she's writing this, that this was over decades and decades and decades. Like, this, like, the main traumas, like, the, 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 the low, the low point for her. That much happened that you're like, this must have spent multiple decades but it didn't. But you could believe that that went on for like 30 odd years. And then you're realizing that she's writing this book about, hang on, do some math. It's not that hard. Uh, th six years roughly after turning her life around, give or take. Um, but that, that period of her life just, there's, there's, so much that happens and then I'm thinking myself of like her age when it started and her age at the time of publication and so it's shocking that that much is crammed into that window of her life um so yeah I think it was incredibly well done um it's a book that's very special to me I think I think it's it would be instrumental in gaining knowledge and learning more um and her uh what did she call her great grandmother she called I believe her Cheechum um and she just had so much wisdom to give her and they were so close so those were like those moments where like you just were so happy that she had that person to fall back on and to rely on. Um, but there was so much expected from her at such a young age. And she had so many dreams and goals and ambitions. And um, thankfully she did, you know, eventually figure out the correct way and the, the right the right way for herself and for indigenous people's future to realize these dreams and ambitions like she directed her energy in such an incredible um insurmountable way after everything she had been through um there's just so many moments where i was like oh you just you so feel for her and you know she's not the only one. Like, that's made blatantly obvious. She's not the only one. Um, and, yeah. I'm... <sighs> I just don't feel like it's something I could easily... Summarize, like, efficiently without feeling like I've done it a misjustice. A disservice. Um would be really how I feel about it. I think everyone should read this. I think the content warnings should be heated and considered. And I think it should be definitely like over a certain age range, uh, for sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it's educating about a whole side of things of how people were treated by the government and by the white people that was so hidden and swept up under the rug. So if you didn't live to witness it, you didn't know about it unless you were taught. And that's why I think there's the importance of being educated. So I would highly recommend this book. It is definitely, um, a somber book but it is um 
informative, it is inspiring, it is dark, it is challenging. Those are some key words I would definitely use to describe it, but it is very well done. Um, and yeah, I think, I think she is an incredible woman who has done amazing things. Um, and just really pioneered. I would, I would say from what, from what I'm reading and from how things from then to now seem, and obviously there's a lot more work that needs to be done. However, there also does seem to be great improvement from like the 1960s. And I would say from my understanding so far, I would think she was, an instrumental like pioneer towards these positive changes um yeah so that's my thoughts on half breed which i was saying half blood earlier in the video and i am sorry <laughs> i i saw that i was watching back and i'm like oh no 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 half breed by maria campbell um I have, there's more Indigenous books I'm wanting to read. I've currently read, no, I've got one more to read. I've got one more to read. Um, but I'm hoping to get my hands on, there's others I've got my eyes on and that I'm looking forward to and I'm very excited about. So I'm hoping maybe in the new year um, to get into those. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Half Read by Maria Campbell. Highly recommend, extremely informative, challenging, dark, hopeful, um, but very, very well done. So if it's something that, that you're even remotely interested in, I'd say do it, read it, mm -hmm. read it. Um, yeah, I am extremely thankful that my friend got that for me in the first place, so. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review and I will see you in my next video soon. Take care. Bye-bye.